This is the Impossible Mori Mouton with We Train Dogs, and this is five tips on how to handle your dog and a baby. This is a subject that I get a lot, and today we are working with Ember and a couple locally here, and we have some issues with Ember being a very physical dog. Not a bad dog, not at all. In fact, she's incredibly good, but she will put some pressure on you because she is incredibly strong. Now, I got a call because she had some issues with pulling and reacting to distractions and because they have a baby, they don't want to get pulled off their feet or have any issues with that. And so that's what we're working with. So right in the very beginning here, guys, we throw the kitchen sink at her and we start with a door drill where we're based on the baby and we're going to get started here. And so the door starts to come open and what we're working on is her basically just not being able to um manipulate the environment i don't want her running down the street or doing anything like that i want her to basically just be calm and not pull or try to manipulate the situation in any way and as you see she does a pretty good job of that doesn't go out until she's invited and then what we do is we're coming out in the front yard and we go right into it. And what I want to do is just go right into the awfully stuff here. And I, and I have them kind of take a, a stand here real quick. Because I don't want her just running out and just starting to, to do the walking. Um, I really want them to, uh, you know, this to be a, a group experience. And I want this to be fun for her. So I want her to know that, you know, when you see him with the baby, there's no point putting pressure on you. No point running or doing anything like that. And guys, uh, we really just want to, uh, you know, condition your dog and your baby really before you, you start walking. So guys, we really started this process in the house with the bed stays and stuff like that. And now we're progressing outside. So this is really just par for the course. Uh, Ember has seen him with the baby in his arms many times and knows not to jump up or do anything like that. And now we're just taking this to its next kind of logical step and we're kind of taking it down the street and we're taking it to its next logical conclusion. So we're kind of working with the baby and we're working with downstays and other stuff and eventually we're going to work um, our way up to the point to where um, you know, we're taking our baby on, on, a, on a longer walk. Now I want you just to start with stay and then once again work your way up to moving and then you know try to really develop a more of a hands-off mentality right here guys you, you really do not want to be doing a lot of you know real physical manipulation here and the reason why is because when you have your baby you know you, you're not going to be focused on the dog you actually are going to be focused on the baby so you want to teach that right from the very beginning and you don't want to be very heavy-handed in your handling and so you want to have everything in place beforehand um, so you can so you can prevent yourself from having to do a lot of tug and pull whenever you're working with your dog. So this process just starts in the front yard. And once again, we're just doing some basic conditioning. And, and what I want to teach Ember is when you're out in the front yard, I want you just to stay with me. And I want you just to, to have fun with me. And if we're walking, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going down the street. We can do this in the house or anywhere. Uh, and right now, actually, Ember really isn't even in a, a formal heel, believe it or not. Uh, we, we just have kind of taught her that if we're outside, I just want you kind of, uh, I want you to gravitate to this area. And so we're really just positively reinforcing this. So this is more uh, um, kind of a conditioning thing and we're, we're adding the leash work right here and we're just gonna kind of keep switching things on and off. So we're gonna add the leash and then we're gonna drop the leash and we wanna work with both things so that she's not, you know, she don't necessarily have to have the leash in your hands and she's not necessarily reacting to that. We're really just trying to switch things up on her and, and not get her used to one thing or the other. Uh, and that goes to the next point, which is um, you know, really you want to have all the right equipment in place, guys. This is point number two. Uh, right now we have the, uh, the baby carriage, we have the long line, we have the six foot leash, we have a martingale collar, we have the vibration slash e-collar. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. And the point of that is we, we basically want to um, have you know, an insurance policy for all contingencies. So um, I'm really, you know, focused on the dog right here and I want her to focus on not, not really putting a lot of pressure on the dog using the leash. And our goal here is to use that leash as little as possible, which is why we have, you know, all the equipment in place. And I'm, we really want to desensitize her and get her used to working with the, the baby carriage. So you really want to be consistent here and you do not want to let the, the baby change your mood or to change your handling style. So actually the, the baby taps out pretty quick here. It's kind of a hot day and the sun's kind of beating down on us. So we actually had to, um, to put her baby up pretty quickly, but uh, we, we really got to go um, on a pretty good walk here. 
And what you want to do is basically just kind of work your way up to that. And you really just do not want to, um, to hesitate or anything like that. You want to lead and you want to project an air of confidence. And your mood and your handling style is very important. And you do not want your, uh, the distractions in the world to detract from that. So right here, as we go along this fence, there's actually a dog and it's barking. And that's why I'm handling the long line here. I want to make sure we have no deteriorations and we want to be consistent as possible. We really do not want our dog to determine our pace or our path or anything like that. So we're going to dictate all of that, guys, and, and that's what we're doing here. Uh, one of the first things it, in this video, basically we're gonna be doing a little bit more advanced stuff, but what you probably wanna do uh, if you're at home is try not to go too far from your house. So some of the stuff that we were doing in the front yard would actually be pretty good for you and work inside your, your front yard and your backyard and make sure that you're consistent there, guys. We really want to, uh, especially when we get our dogs and, and they start doing really well, we kind of want to go globe trekking and try to go around the block. And I encourage you not to do that, especially when you're trying to condition your dog for, for a baby or with a baby carriage. You really want to um, condition your dog for the area immediately around your house and then work your way out to you know, more high distraction environments. So guys, that's kind of what we did here. And as you can see, we went out to a fairly open area, uh, an area that's not as developed. Um, there are still some distractions out here. There are actually some kids playing. And the video that I'm actually taking right here is from a DJI drone. And it is actually quite distracting as well. So this is actually one of the higher level distractions that I have is this drone. Most of the dogs that I work with hate it. And so when it's flying around, it's a really uh, a good distraction and it puts a lot of pressure on the dog and in turn that can put pressure on the handler and that's one of the things that we're working on here and as you can see she's trailing this long line and we're basically just working our way through the environment and what we're looking for is continuity i want the same dog that we had in the front yard to be right here i don't want anything to change and so we're basically just taking her out and you know we're making this very very positive and we want to be consistent and have continuity the entire time so we're not trying to react to a whole bunch of distractions here we're just trying to lead and i want to have a very good connection with my dog here and so we take took her out to an area where it's nice and open and there are a lot of distractions there are a lot of things you know going on but we have a fairly good reaction time here i think if it's really hard for anything to kind of sneak up on us uh, we can see things that are approaching and so we kind of work our way to the to the higher distraction environments and that's just kind of a better strategy for um, for conditioning your dog and try to do a lot of changing directions and not walking straight and if you see right here when you go to change directions a lot of times your dog will will hesitate and that's you know really important is you don't want to get your dog used to you um, you know going super straight at first eventually that's exactly what you want to do and that's what you see here but and initially we actually had to do a lot of turning with that baby carriage this is not the first time we work with that baby carriage and so you know ember has gotten used to that baby carriage turning in front of her and that baby carriage being the frame of reference and that's the thing guys that's really what you want to be is you want to be your dog's frame of reference you don't want your dog looking at other distractions and, and they might engage with them with their eyes, but you want them to, to break off that distraction and bring that attention right back to you. And so one of the things that you want to do, one of the things that makes this a little bit easier for your dog is to change directions a little bit uh, because this can really help them just understand what you want. So right here we do a little bit of a handoff and we phase out the baby carriage and we work on just some more strictly off leash stuff here. And once again, I want, her to be my, my main handler to be the the center of attention and so ember is pretty focused on her and she's not reacting to the drone not reacting to the baby carriage so i said let's just go ahead and phase the baby carriage out right now because we're not getting a whole lot and i want you just to continue this but once again notice how much space that we have guys any distractions that are coming on i i have a uh, we have a jump on them and so what we want to do is just take this to an area to where you have a lot of warning there aren't you know any people you know within really about 250 maybe 300 yards way in the back if you can see it there there, there are some kids playing but you know right now we're pretty isolated and so you want to work on on, on these uh, sorts of behaviors and environments like this and then you work your way up once again to the to the higher distracting environments and guys what you're trying to do is block everything else out and really just focus on your dog um, you really want to practice uh, also 
practice transitions and changes of energy guys and this is where it's very important and this is tip number four is I want you to have a cadence I want you to talk with your dog as you're as you're walking and that's what you see here she's really practicing her cadence and you know she has the long line in her hand right here but she's really not using it a whole lot and what I really want her to, to be doing is just focusing on talking with her dog and you can see that Ember is very interested in her and yes we're bribing Ember retreats and so you know when you're out in a real high distraction environment and you have a drone and a lot of stuff going on you want to have um, something to contend with those distractions and so that's why we have the bill jack going and she's working really well with that and, but what you want to do is also have a connection with your dog with your voice just in case you don't have a leash guys you don't have a collar we're going to phase all this equipment out eventually but we are going to have our voice and so this connection with your voice and her seeing your face and having good eye contact all that is really really important so you want to really embed that in your training and that's what we're doing right here and we're taking a, a whole kind of extra part of the training we're just walking and, and we're, we're really wanting to do kind of a change of energy with your dog and um, a part of that is walking from point A to point B and so this would be considered point B in this training which is basically just a, a, an area where me and my dog can hang out and um, sometimes that area might have a lot of people around it but I think initially in the beginning parts of the training you're going to want it to be kind of like this and to be uh, relatively far away from people and you, you want just to have this personal connection with your dog guys it's really going to help you in the long run and also this really helps you to you know take advantage of the, the natural distractions in the environment there are kids playing in the distance there was a guy i think that, that came by on his bike eventually and so there are some distractions that are going to come up and you want to just be able to, to use those but you want to be able to take those kind of one at a time and you want to break those things down into pieces so now guys here comes the hard part and we're transitioning back and we're starting on our way back home so um, this is really where it actually takes a, quite a bit of control here because at this point she's starting to get pretty fatigued I mean we've been walking well over a mile um, we've been putting some some miles on her I mean, on purpose because we want to get as much practice in as possible um, and eventually we're gonna have the baby and so right now we couldn't take the baby with us so we're just trying to get as much of these distractions um, conditioned as possible before we get to the point to where the baby is with us so that when the baby is with us it's just par for the course and we're already good to go so on the way back it's very important that we maintain control because at this point you got to think about what the baby might be going through your baby might be a little fussy right now might be starting to whine might be starting to cry a little bit and they're going to be distractions all along this road on the way back home so you can see that that you know there are houses on both sides here and you're really going to be bracketed by distractions eventually there could be people out in the front yard there's going to be a lot going on and as you start to see i start to phase fade my way out a little bit and the reason why is because i want her to be able to do this when i'm not here and that's very important um, i don't want to always have to be here in order for her to you know to have the right um, behavior out of her dog and it's more important that her and ember have this connection than me and ember have the connection and so right here i'm just kind of phasing my, my way out but we're doing this at a time where once again there aren't a lot of people and as you can see she's able to you know maintain this formation and as long as she's doing this we're going to keep reinforcing this behavior guys we're going to have a, a very high um you know uh, treat uh, reward history right here we're actually going pretty fast we're giving her a lot of treats and eventually we start to phase that out but at this point you know you might actually you know be stepping this up because your dog is going to start to get fatigued and she's starting to drop her nose here she's starting to to respond to some of these distractions also guys notice how we're on the other side of the road so that's really important you want to use the natural distractions and then use the environment because that's really going to really play a big role in where you're you know how the, the training goes um, there's another dog that's coming up here and we're, we're getting prepared for that dog and we, we basically want to um, maintain this um, this level of control as we pass that distraction guys so that brings me to my fifth point and it's one of the more important points which is um, you really want to plan the whole trip and plan your route you know we did most of this walk so I could do this rep that's about to come up right here at the end where we're walking past this dog and I want to make sure you gotta understand what's going on here guys I have a drone in the air I have the dog and I have her with the with the, the baby carriage and I want to make sure that we have no deterioration here so it's very important I don't want her to take a step back and I'm playing this the whole time in the hopes that this part will go well so you know that's the thing is you have some distractions in mind in the beginning 
that you're thinking about working on and you want to make sure that you have continuity as you interact with those distractions guys and also prevention is worth a pound of cure and so that's what we're working on here we know this dog is here she lives right behind this dog so she knows that every time she takes her dog for a walk she's gonna have this which is her, this dog just kind of teasing he just wants to play but he barks and he runs back and forth and if we have not practiced this ahead of time once again we get the baby maybe the baby's crying fussing because you got two dogs on either side you, this is not the place where you want to get bogged down and have your dog stop you you want to specifically know that right here i don't want to get stopped here i want to just accelerate i want to get past this distraction ember did really well um, our cadence worked right here we were just motivating her the entire time giving that positive reinforcement and we were able to get past that distraction so guys you really want to focus on the start and the stop of your videos I mean, i'm sorry uh, <laughs> the start and the stop of your uh, your training um, in the initial period when you're first coming outside right when we open that garage door we we're really working on not losing control right there and that's very very important and that's the same thing that we're doing right here guys so this is the end of the walk we already had the crescendo of the training where um, we have the, the, the dog um, that was really teasing her and we had the drone and we've done the off-leash stuff. And right here, it's just very, very important that we have no deterioration, okay? Um, as we, her house is right there on the right, you see with the white truck right there. And we do not want to have, you know, Ember break ranks and run into the house or do anything like that. And we also don't want Ember to see the house as the end of the walk. You see how she starts to slow up and break formation right there. Then she gets back into formation. We purposefully walk past the house because I don't want her looking at that, um, that landmark as a frame of reference. I want her looking at me and I want her understanding that it's not, you know, the, the landmark. It's not where we are. You really need to focus on me no matter where we are in, in the environment. So guys, I want you to maintain control. And, and here's a big part, guys. Stick to the plan. Be conservative at first. We had a plan here. We came out. We were going to work with her on distractions and working with the baby carriage. We had to deviate from the plan a little bit because honestly, the baby um, tapped out a little early. And that, and that happens. But we were still able to get a good rep with her. And this is the kind of thing that you want to do, you know, maybe before your baby is uh, here, if possible. And you want to take the baby carriage out and do exactly what we're doing. Teach her exactly what you expect of her before the baby comes. Another really important thing that you might want to try out is you might want to have your cell phone on right here. You might want to have it playing some crying or some baby noises or some other stuff like that because that's what's really going to be going on. If, and, and if you don't have a baby, just get the next best thing. If you can get a uh, you know a doll or something like that, you see how right there she deviates a little bit, guys. Once again, you want continuity and you want to make sure that she doesn't take a step back. Here you go through changes of direction, and it's very very important that right here at the end you maintain solid control. And if you can do that, then you're going to see that your dog's endurance gets built up over time, and you can eventually take them anywhere. Guys, this isn't the last training session that we have with them. I think we have one or two more after this with them, but she did really, really well. And one of the things that you wanna do is just make sure that you start slow and then you work your way up, guys. Especially when you get to the, do the off-leash part with your dog, you start working with the long line stuff. Things get a lot of fun and it kind of feels like you're going downhill. And it's really easy to take a step back. You're not trying to be a bad handler, but things might come up. And so you wanna just really try to get that continuity and consistency. And, and then you can eventually phase out all the equipment and everything will just be you walking with your dog and you won't need the tree pouch, you won't need the long line, you won't need the leash, you won't need all that. But initially, you wanna have this so you can help maintain your dog's focus and so you also have an advantage um, against the outside world. I absolutely take you know no risks when it comes to baby conditioning, guys. Uh, you wanna you, you really wanna be very very careful because you know things deteriorate, things can go bad really really fast in dog training. So you wanna stay on top of this. this is actually a pretty serious subject. And so what I want you to do is get out ahead of it, get as, get out ahead of it as early as you can, and um, you know, really just try to set that foundation. And guys, this rep ends with her going in, going onto the bed, and that, that's how the rep ends. So guys, if you enjoyed this video and you uh, learned something, then please like and subscribe. This is Mari Mouton with Retrain Dogs. You guys have a really nice day.